Bach Creative 1475 CD opens a whole new world of sewing for all your crafts and wearables. Create a look as bold as your imagination with an incredible palette that challenges your imagination. With the PC Designer software, your creativity is boundless. Welcome to volume three of our how-to video. Crystal and I are really anxious to show you the world's first link to the 1475 CD in the home computer. This unique software package will allow you total creative control. We will design new 9mm programs and 40mm programs, as well as entering in-memory sequences very quickly. That's right, Philip. We'll show you how to customize the built-in stitches to add a new look or just a touch of whimsy. Also, we'll show you some new techniques on your 1475 CD. And we'll explore some new possibilities with fabrics like this ultra leather. Also, some novelty threads. But don't forget about the old tried and true techniques that we've updated. For example, these quilting techniques that you see here on this sampler. But for now, we really want to show you the new PC Designer software. So let's get the computer set up. FOP has written software for the IBM compatible and Macintosh computers. Here, we have an IBM compatible and we'll be using this throughout. The Macintosh software is very similar. But first, a bit of the basics. This is a mouse. It even has a tail. The IBM mouse has buttons on the top. Pressing the right mouse button allows you to escape or leave a command. The left mouse button allows you to enter or select a command. You can also use the keyboard in place of the mouse buttons. Selecting the escape key is the same as pressing the right mouse button, and the enter key is the same as the left mouse button. Underneath is a tracking ball. It rolls around the mouse pad as you move the mouse. On the screen, the cross will move in the same direction as the mouse. Practice moving your mouse on the mouse pad because the more you practice, the better your results will be. We'll also use the keyboard for some commands. We have already installed the PC Designer software onto the hard disk of the computer, following the instructions in the manual. Next, with your sewing machine turned off, connect the interface cable to the 1475 CD. Don't forget to turn your machine back on. This is the opening screen of the software. At the bottom is a menu. It asks you to press a key for your selection. P for P Design, when you want to design a new stitch or change an existing stitch. M for M design, when you want to design stitch sequences. R E for exit, when you want to quit the program. We'll start with the P design and so we'll press P on the keyboard. This is the main screen of the P section. On the bottom is a rectangular area outlined in color. This is the work area. Here is where you will be designing all your stitches. Across the top is a menu. Each heading gives you a clue to the commands in the submenu under it. With the heading file highlighted, press the left mouse button. The submenu appears. The commands here allow you to save, retrieve, or create new stitches. Press the right mouse button to escape from the submenu. There, we're back to just the main menu. Now I'll move the mouse and highlight the edit heading. I'll press the left mouse button to see the submenu. The edit command allows you to add, Delete, move, insert, and search for individual stitches in your design. I'll press the right mouse button to escape this submenu. The screen now has a dialog box alerting you that the work area is empty and instructing you to press any key, so I will. I'll move the mouse to highlight the design heading. I'll press the left mouse button to see the submenu. The design menu lets you draw and work with a template. A template is an overlay on the work area that guides you in placing your final stitches. By itself, it can never be sewn by the machine nor permanently stored on the disk. Let's press the right mouse button and escape from this submenu. Move the mouse to highlight the utility heading. Press the left mouse button to view the submenu. The utility menu lets you manipulate the entire stitch that is in the work area and adds a grid in the work area to help in placing individual stitches. Press the right mouse button to escape. 
Highlight Format. The last heading in the menu. Press the left mouse button to see the sub-menu. The Format menu lets you change the work area itself. You can move it left or right, up or down to view parts of a large design that are hidden from view. You can magnify or reduce the work area to see all or just certain parts of your design. Press the right mouse button to escape the menu. When you look just below the main menu, you'll find a status display. It can be a very helpful reminder. It will tell you the mode or current command that you're using, as well as the stitch program number and its coordinate points. And below that is the outline of the work area. Now we can see the top, the bottom, and the left. The right side is hidden from view. Crystal, how about doing a new MDF design for us? Sure. First, let's open the file menu by highlighting it and pressing the left mouse button. Now we'll select a new MDF pattern by highlighting it and pressing the left mouse button again. Notice that there are only two boundaries of the work area visible. Remember what I said about seeing the boundaries of your work area? Well, the top one isn't there. That's because the previous screen had a medium-sized 9mm work area. When we selected MDF, the program gave us a medium-sized MDF work area. The 9mm and 40mm MDF workspaces come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. The largest 9mm workspace is about the same size as the smallest 40mm workspace. But remember, this is just your work area. I like to see my boundaries when I'm designing a new stitch, so I'll reduce until I can see them. I'll move the mouse to the right and highlight the format menu. I'll open Format by pressing the left mouse button. Now, I'll highlight Reduce and click the left mouse button to select it. Good, now I can see my work area. I'll now slide the mouse left and open the Edit menu. Add Stitch is already highlighted, so I'll just press the left mouse button to select it. The Add Stitch command allows you to place or enter the actual stitches the machine will sew. We'll be moving the cross around the work area and every time we click the left mouse button, we'll be entering a stitch. I'm going to design a heart with an arrow. Let's go back to the computer. I'm going to start here at the bottom of my work area and put in the first stitch. Now watch as I move the mouse. The cross follows in the same direction. And that white line, well, that represents a stitch. And I like to think of it as elastic thread. You see how it stretches in all directions? Now I'll start entering my stitches one by one, creating the shape of a heart. Here, let's put in an arrow. Clicking as I go, each time I click the mouse button, I've added a stitch to my design. Now we'll finish the left side of my heart. Clicking and stitching. Click, stitch, all the way to the top of my heart. Now on to the right side. Let's finish the arrow. And now we'll complete the heart. There, finished. Now watch the screen redraw itself as I exit this command. The program automatically redraws the screen and inserts the stitches necessary for the sewing machine to sew out your design.
If you've ever programmed an M memory with eight-way feed stitches, you'll understand the relationship between MDF and eight-way feed stitches. The program inserts stitches that are similar to the eight-way feed stitches, which are about one to two millimeters in length. The computer does all the work translating your design into something the sewing machine can sew out. Let's go to the computer and we'll send our design to the machine. I'll open the file menu and select to machine. Now I'll click the left mouse button. The machines are talking to each other. And now it displays the P memory directory from the machine. The first empty P memory is highlighted, so I'll click the left mouse button to transfer this stitch to the machine. When the dialog box disappears, the transfer is complete. Let's go to the machine and sew this out. Make sure to use foot number eight with all the MDF designs. I've also engaged the single pattern key. Let's sew. There, a brand new stitch, never before sewn, an original. I'd like to save this one onto the disc. Philip will show us that next. With the stitch design still on the screen, select two discs from the file menu. Click the left hand mouse button and a dialog box appears asking you to name the stitch. Use the keyboard to type in up to eight letters or numbers. I'll call this heart. Do not use any punctuation or spaces. The program won't recognize this after it's saved. Now press the enter key on the keyboard. There you go, Crystal. It's safe for you to use any time you want to. Thanks, Philip. Now why don't you try altering or manipulating a stitch for us? That's a good idea, but I'm going to use a stitch program that's already built into the machine to show you how easy it is to manipulate any stitch. I'm going to use program number 211, which is the teddy bear. So let's go to the computer and send it from the machine to the screen. Open the file menu and select from machine. Here's a dialog box asking if I want to continue, and we do. So slide the mouse left to highlight yes and click the left button. Now we have another dialog box this time asking you to choose either a stitch program or a P memory. Highlight stitch program and click the left mouse button. The next dialog box asks us to enter the stitch number. Use the keyboard to type in 211 for the teddy bear. Then press the enter key on the keyboard. The stitch has been transferred and is now displayed on the screen, but I really don't want to work with him upside down. So I'll go and mirror image him right now. I'll open the utility menu and select mirror. There, that's much better. I'd like to add balloons for the bear to hold. Let's open the edit menu and select add stitch by clicking the left mouse button. The blue cross appears in the work area attached to the last stitch. The add stitch command always attaches stitches to the end of your design. It cannot add stitches anywhere else on the design. That's right. When I was designing my heart and arrow, I used the add stitch command even though my workspace was empty. I placed my first stitch wherever I wanted, then the next stitches were attached to the last. If you want to add stitches anywhere else in your design, there's another command we use. It's called insert stitch but we'll be using that later. Let's go now and add stitches to the bear. I'll add a longer string, then the balloons.
I finished adding stitches, so I'll press the right mouse button to exit this command. I don't like the balloon string coming from the bear's neck, so I'll change it. From the edit menu, select move stitch by pressing the left mouse key. The cross is back, but this time it has a different function. As I move it, notice that it's not attached to any of the stitches. I'm going to move the stitch closest to the bear's neck, but not on it. Move the cross close to that stitch and click the mouse key. Now the stitch is attached to the cross. I can move it all around the work area. Drag it down to the paw where we want it. Click the left mouse key to anchor it in place. Let's end this command. Click the right mouse key. We need to send this modified stitch to the sewing machine. Go to the file menu and select to machine. The computer is talking to the sewing machine. And now it displays the P memory directory from the machine. The first empty P memory is highlighted. Click the left mouse button to transfer the stitch to the machine. When the dialog box disappears, the transfer is complete. Let's go to the machine and sew this out. I have on foot number eight, and I'll engage the single pattern key and sew. Would you look at that? There's the bear with his balloons. Remember, when you change a built-in stitch, the original remains in the machine just the way Foth designed it. And we can save the altered version on the disc, the same way we did your heart and arrow. We've moved stitches and added stitches. So now, Crystal, it's time to go on to deleting stitches. Okay, let's use another built-in stitch. This time, a nine millimeter one. I'd like to use number 49, the outline heart. We'll bring it up from the machine. Open the file menu and click to select from machine. Yes, we do want to continue, so we'll highlight yes and click. The second dialog box asks us to choose Stitch Program or P Memory. We'll highlight Stitch Program and click the left mouse button. The next dialog box asks us to type in the stitch number. We'll use the keyboard and type in 49 and press Enter. The work area is a little small to see what I'm doing, so I'd like to make it larger. We'll open the Format menu and highlight Magnify and click the left mouse button. The work area is now the medium size for a 9 millimeter design. Let me explain work area size to you. You saw earlier when I drew the heart and arrow that I had to reduce my work area in order to see my whole workspace. This time the heart came up much smaller. This is because the program has three different work area sizes for both the 9mm and the MDF designs. That's right, Crystal. Each has a small, medium, and large work area. I like to use the largest for the 9mm and the smallest for the 40mm. The reason is that these sizes fill my screen without any hidden parts at the top or the bottom. I do use the largest MDF size when I want to fine-tune a design. That's just why I use them too, Philip. But for now, let's get on to deleting. First, I'm going to mirror the heart so it's not upside down. So I'll open the Utility menu and select Mirror. Much better. 
Let's now open the Edit menu and select Delete Stitch. I'm going to delete the three stitches in the center of the heart, so I'll move the cross close to the center stitch and click the left mouse button to attach it. Do I want to delete this stitch? Yes. I'll highlight that and click the left mouse button. Now I'll delete the left stitch since the cross is already there. We'll click the left mouse button. The dialog box? Yes, I do want to delete. So we'll highlight yes and click the mouse. Now move the cross close to the right stitch and click the mouse to attach it. The dialog box? Yes, I want to delete. This time I don't use the mouse. Just press the letter Y on the keyboard. Let's stop and talk about what I just did. On the last delete we did something different. We used the keyboard instead of the mouse buttons. In the beginning we told you that you could use the enter key instead of the left mouse button and the escape key instead of the right mouse button. You can also use Y for yes and N for no when a dialog box wants an answer. We'll be switching back and forth between these keys, but we'll always tell you which one we're using. Sometimes we'll use the keyboard because it will be the only way to enter. For example, a stitch number. Okay, Crystal, you can continue on deleting. I've deleted all the stitches I want to, so I'm going to exit this command by pressing the escape key on the keyboard. The cross is gone, but I'm missing some of my grid where I've deleted stitches. So I can replace the missing parts of that grid just by opening the Edit menu and highlighting Redraw Screen. I click the mouse, or you could press Enter. The program redrew the work area, including the grid. Let's send this stitch design to the sewing machine and sew it. We'll open the file menu and click to machine. Here's the P memory directory. The first empty memory is highlighted, so we'll press enter. The transfer is finished and we can go to the machine and sew it. Since this is a 9 millimeter stitch, we can use foot number 2A. Now I've already sewn a row of stitch number 49, now I'll sew the changed version. Just by deleting three stitches, look how we've changed even this simple stitch. Just imagine, now you can change all those designs you wish didn't have this stitch or that doodad. And even the ones that you wish did have a little extra stitch. Next, I'm going to show you how to insert a stitch. I'm going to use program number 41, which is the maple leaf. It doesn't have a vein down the center, so we'll add one. So let's go on to the computer. First, let's bring up stitch number 41 from the sewing machine. So open the file menu and highlight from machine. Now press enter. Here's the first dialog box. Yes, I do want to continue, so I'll just type Y. Since stitch program is already highlighted, I'll just press enter. Now I'll type the stitch number 41. And press enter. And here's our maple leaf. Open the edit menu and highlight insert stitch. Press the left mouse button. Move the cross to the stitch where the stem is and click the left mouse button to attach the cross to the stitch. A dialog box appears in the upper left corner. We haven't seen this type of dialog box before. It only appears when there is more than one stitch at the chosen coordinates. It has several options. Let's take a closer look at this, Philip. The highlighted one is exit, and it will do just that if you select it. The second one is insert after this stitch. If you look above the dialog box and to the right, you will see that the stitch that is attached to the cross is number five. 
If you click on this command, it will insert the new stitch after stitch number five, moving all the stitches up by one number. Let's move down and highlight the third command, next stitch. This will move the cross to the next stitch at these coordinates. Let's click the left mouse button and select it. See what has changed on the screen? Look at the stitch number at the upper right. It now shows stitch number 29, and the exit command is highlighted. Let's see if there are more than two stitches with the same coordinates. So highlight and click on next stitch. The stitch display still shows number 29, so that means that there are only two stitches at these coordinates, number 5 and number 29. If I want to insert new stitches after stitch number 5, I would need to go back to number 5. So let's highlight and click on the command previous stitch. We're back at stitch number 5. Let's recap what we've just learned. When more than one stitch has the same coordinates, the program will display a dialog box. This box is basically asking you which stitch you want to do something with. You can choose either the next stitch or go back to the previous stitch. Then you need to give the command for what you want to do to that stitch. Right. The same dialog box will appear for several different commands, but only when two or more stitches have the same coordinates. It will appear for move stitch, insert stitch, or delete stitch. Okay, Crystal, let's go back to inserting stitches. Here we are at stitch number five, but I want to insert after number 29. Go down and select next stitch. Click or enter. There, we're back at 29. Next, select the command insert after this stitch. Click or press the enter key. I've attached the cross to the stem stitch. Watch it move. With the mouse, I'll just bring it straight down to the center of the leaf. When it's where I want it, I can click the left mouse button or press enter. The program inserted a stitch and redrew the screen after I signaled OK with my click. Let's insert another stitch at the point where the stem and leaf join. This way the machine won't take such a long stitch. I'll move the cross back to the stitch I just inserted and click. Move the cross with the stitch up towards the stem. There. I'll click the left mouse button to anchor it in place. Okay, let's exit this command. Press the right mouse button or the escape key. Let's send it to the machine and then sew it off. Open the file menu and select to machine. Here's the pmemory directory and all we need to do is click on the empty memory that is already highlighted. All transferred. Let's go sew this out. Be sure to select the right P memory. Here's the maple leaf with the inserted stitches. It's easy to insert and delete stitches in any of the existing stitch programs, whether it's a built-in program or one of your own designs. It changes the look of any stitch, which adds an almost limitless number of ideas for you. Just remember, you cannot select any of the five alphabets or the maxi monograms. You also cannot transfer to the computer any of the buttonholes, the darning stitches, or the eight-way feed stitches. But you can draw your own eight-way feed stitches using the add stitch and the insert stitch command. Let's do that now using program 91, which is a branch with flowers. We'll turn it into a row of blossoms. Let's open file and select from machine by highlighting and clicking. Yes, I do want to continue, so I'll press Y on the keyboard. I'll click the left mouse button to OK that I want a stitch program. Now I'll type in program number 91 and press the Enter key. Here's the blossom branch. 
The first thing we need to do is turn on the MDF. To do this, we'll open the utility menu and we'll select MDF on off. We'll highlight it and click the left mouse button. The work area is in the medium size MDF mode and what I'm going to do is add stitches in order to sew the branches upright. So we'll open the edit menu and select add stitch by highlighting and clicking. Now remember that add stitch only lets you add stitches at the end of a design and I want to put the connecting stitches at the bottom of the branch so I'll backtrack stitch by stitch to the beginning stitch at the left hand side of the screen. There is a large red dot that indicates the first stitch of the design. We'll trace through our flower stem stitch by stitch back to the beginning. Here. Now I'm back at the beginning but instead of just jumping across I'd like to zigzag so it looks more like grass between the flower stems. So we'll go right to left, zigzagging across the bottom of the flower. There, that's enough stitches to give me the space I need for a repeat design. So let's press the right mouse button to exit this command. Now we can send this to the machine. So we'll open the file menu and select to machine by highlighting and clicking the left mouse button. The next empty P memory is highlighted. So all I have to do is OK by clicking the left mouse button and the transfer is complete. Let's go sew this out. Make sure you have the correct P memory selected. Flowers from the garden. Any built-in 9mm design or new 9mm stitch from the disc can be made larger simply by turning on the MDF mode. That's right. And I'm going to show you another simple design to do. I'm going to add a palm tree to the alligator to give him a shady place to rest. I'll also show you a few other features of the program that we haven't used yet. So Crystal, let's go back to the computer. Open the file and select From Machine. Yes, I do want to continue. I'll type Y or highlight yes and click the left mouse button. Press enter or the left mouse button to OK stitch program. Type in stitch number 174 for the alligator, then press enter. And there's our alligator. Let's turn on the MDF. So open the utility menu and select MDF on off. Click the left mouse to OK the command. The head of the alligator is not visible in the work area, so I'm going to move the work area in order to see that part. Open the format menu and highlight move right. Click the mouse or press the enter key. Let's stop here and talk about the commands in the format menu. The format menu allows you to manipulate the work area, but not the stitches inside. I just used the command move right to view stitches that continued off the screen on the right. I could use move left to view hidden stitches on the left. So move right moves to the right or toward the end of your stitch and move left moves to the left toward the beginning of your stitch. These options will help you see where to place your stitches. That's right. A little later on we'll be using the move up and move down command 
but they do exactly what you would think they would do. They move the work area either up or down. So Crystal, let's go back to the computer. I really think I would like the alligator walking away from the palm instead of toward it. So let's open the utility menu and select rotate 180 degrees. Highlight and click. Okay, there's the end of the tail. The stitch was flipped back to front. Let's talk about the utility menu and what I just did. The utility menu is used to manipulate a stitch that is in the work area. Both Crystal and I turned on the MDF to make a 9 millimeter stitch much wider. I just rotated the alligator 180 degrees, which flips him front to back. The other utility commands can be used to add a grid to your work area. You can choose a wide or narrow grid. It's just a matter of preference. I usually work with a narrow grid, and that's what Philip will use for his alligator. The remaining command is rotate 90 degrees. This can be used with a 9 millimeter stitch that is 9 millimeters or less in length. But it can never be used in the MDF modes. Philip, why don't we add that palm tree to your alligator? All right, Crystal. Open the Edit menu and select Add Stitch. Now we're attached to the last stitch. Now I'm going to have to move the work area or I'll have a very short palm tree. So click the right mouse button or the escape key to exit this command. Open the format menu and select move up. Click the left mouse button. Go back to the edit menu and select add stitch. I'll just keep placing stitches to draw my palm tree. Now back down for the other side of the trunk. Uh oh, we just ran out of work area. So let's exit this command by clicking the right mouse button. Again, open the format menu and select move down. Highlight and click the left mouse button. Go back to the edit menu and select add stitch. I'll finish adding the last stitches to the trunk. Now exit the command by clicking the right mouse button. Before I sew this out, I'd really like to see the complete stitch design. So I'm going to go back to the computer and reduce the work area. Open the format menu and select reduce. Not the complete view yet. Open the format menu again and select move left. Highlight and click. There, the whole stitch design. I think that looks good. Let's send it to the sewing machine. Open the file menu and select to machine. Make sure your sewing machine is turned on for this step. The P memory directory from the sewing machine is displayed. P5 is highlighted. Just click the left mouse button or press the enter key.
The transfer is done. Now we can go to the machine and sew this out. I have already snapped on foot number eight for MDF sewing and engaged the single pattern key on the machine. You could make a whole scene of palms and desert sands, or even put the alligator in a swamp. I think I'll save this on the disc so I can work on it at another time. I like that stitch, Philip. That was a cute design. You know, you could use that idea with a lot of the built-in stitches on the 1475 CD. For example, the elephant. You could put him near a tent, or you could have the kangaroo hopping through the Australian bush. Or you could draw a landscape and fill the sky with hot air balloons. Some of you may not think of yourself as artist, but with the PC Designer software, it's very easy. That's right. And next, we'll show you how to draw a template. Since I like hearts, that's what I'll use to teach you to draw a template with the design menu. But remember, with any of the commands in the design menu, you must use a mouse. Let's go on to the computer. I'll open the file menu and highlight new MDF pattern. Yes, I want to continue with a new MDF pattern, so I'll highlight yes and click the left mouse button. The work area is now empty. I'll open the design menu and highlight draw. I'll click the left mouse button, or I could press the enter key. Now we have a blue cross in the work area. I can move it all around. To draw, I must hold down the left mouse button as I move the mouse around, like this. Try it. A little green line will appear in the work area following exactly the direction you move the mouse. Now lift your finger off the left mouse to stop drawing. See, now when I move the mouse, it does not draw the green line. Let me set in the dots that I'll use to draw my heart template. These dots will act as a guide for me, and I'll go back later and fill them in with a continuous green line all the way around the left side, filling in with my dots. Once I have them in place, I'll hold the left mouse button down continuously to get the solid green line. All the way around the right side of the heart, onto the bottom, following the dots up the left side. With a little practice, template drawing can be very easy. There. Now let me clean up my heart here on the right side. Just fine tune it a little. Now on to the left side. And I'm not concerned about the extra lines because I'll be able to erase those a little later on. There. I've finished. I'll release the button and exit this. The computer is saving this to a special file. Now, I'd like to clean up my template just a little bit, get rid of some of those extra lines. There's a special command in the design menu just for erasing. I'll open the design menu and I'll highlight the erase command by clicking the left mouse button, or I could have pressed the enter key to select it. Do you see this little eraser? It's the little rectangle. Well, I'll move it around so you can see it better. It follows the movements of the mouse. Now, to erase some part of the template, you need to press and hold down the left mouse button. Everything inside the rectangle will be erased. So we'll clean up our template while we're pushing the left mouse button. There, now let's clean up our heart.
onto this side. When I release the left mouse button, I move to another section and I hold it down again and erase a different part of my template. That's an easy way to clean up a template. If you want to get rid of the entire template, you can do that with a quicker way than by the eraser. We can use the delete command. Let's exit this by clicking the right mouse button and it's saving the pattern to a special memory. Okay, now we'll open the design menu again. This time we'll select delete by highlighting it and clicking the left mouse button or the enter key. Yes, the screen displays a dialog box asking if we really want to delete the entire pattern. If you don't want to delete the complete pattern, then now's the time to say no, but we do. So we'll highlight yes and click the left mouse button or type Y on the keyboard. Let's talk about the design menu a bit. The design menu is only for drawing templates. Anything you draw in the design menu cannot be sent to the machine and therefore cannot be sewn out. To do that, you must add stitches by going to the edit menu and selecting the add stitch command. That's right, Crystal. It's only a template or a guide to help in placing stitches later. It's all freehand drawing, but there is a way to draw straight lines if you want to do a geometric template. Yes, it's a little trick I'll show you next, so let's go to the computer. I'll open the design menu and select draw by highlighting and clicking. Here's the blue cross. Now I'll press and hold the left mouse button first. I won't move the mouse. While I'm still holding down the left button, I'll press and hold down the right button. Now, with both buttons depressed, I'll move the mouse to another spot on the work area. See what happens? I'm still holding both buttons down and there's no green line following my mouse. Now I'll release only the right button and then it's okay to release the left one. I'll continue for the rest of my design in the same fashion. First the left button, then the right button, move the mouse to a new part of my workspace, release the right button, then the left button. We'll make a triangle. I'm going to place a few stitches using the template so you get a better idea of how it works. I've already exited the draw mode, now we'll add the stitches. Let's open the edit menu and select add stitch by highlighting and clicking it. This is a very simple triangle but it is a good example of a geometric stitch design. We'll put in our first stitch here, now at the top, down to the bottom, and back across to the first stitch. Now let's exit. We'll click the right mouse button or we could press the escape key. To see the stitches more clearly, let's fade the template out. We'll go to the design menu and select fade in out. We'll click the left mouse button or we could press enter. It's gone from the work area. Sometimes you want to see your stitches without the template in position. Let's recap the design menu. The design menu is used for making templates to be used as an aid in adding stitches later. You can draw a template, erase parts of it, or delete it entirely if you want to. You can fade it in or out also if you want to view the actual stitch design alone. The fade in and out command works like a toggle switch, so if there's a template in your work area, you can use it to fade it out. If you want to view the template again, use the same command to fade it in. Remember that you cannot sew a template. Let me show you what happens if you try to send it to the machine. First, let me get rid of the stitch pattern that Crystal left on the computer. I'll just select New MDF Pattern from the File menu. Highlight and click the left mouse button. Yes, I do want to continue. And the template is back. Now open the file menu again and select to machine.
highlight and click the left mouse button. Notice the dialog box that appears. It's telling you the pattern is empty because we didn't put in any stitches and to press any key. You cannot sew a template, so let's press any key. The same dialog box will appear if you try to save the template to the disk. When you exit the draw, erase, or delete command, the computer will automatically save the template to a temporary file. That's right, but it is only temporary. You must add at least one stitch in order to save your template along with that stitch on the disk, and then you can give it whatever name you like. And it will be saved until you delete the template. I think it's time to go to the M section of the PC Designer. This section is just like the M memories on your 1475 CD. So let's go back to the computer and exit the P section and open up the M section. I'm for that, Philip. Go ahead. Open the file menu and highlight the bottom command, exit. Click the left mouse button or press enter. Here's a dialog box. Do I really want to exit? Yes, I do. Highlight yes and click the left mouse button or type Y on the keyboard. We're back at the opening screen, the red sewing machine. Now type the letter M using the keyboard. A dialog box appears telling you to connect the sewing machine and turn it on. Mine's already on, so now I'll do the next thing it says and press any key. The computer is transferring all the P memories and M memories. The reason for the transfer is that we might want to use them in an M memory sequence and we would need access to them on the computer. The file menu under the P section and M section are similar. Open the file menu and highlight New Sequence. Click the left mouse button or press the Enter key to select it. Now we have a work area and we can start designing a sequence. Open the design menu by highlighting it and clicking the left mouse button or pressing enter. The menu under design lets us select either a stitch program, an alphabet, or a P memory. Let's start with the stitch program. Make sure program 00 through 177 is highlighted and then click the mouse or press enter. I have an idea for an edge finish that uses program number 50. So let's use the keyboard and type 5-0. Now press the left mouse button or press the enter key on the keyboard. In the center of the screen is a display of the stitch with the program number displayed above it. To the right is a submenu with commands that can be applied to that stitch. Below is the length box and to the left is the width box. Using the mouse, let's highlight Change Width in the submenu. Click the left mouse button or press Enter to select it. The width box is now outlined in color, indicating that the box is active. The width 9.0 is highlighted. I can change the width by moving the mouse or pressing the arrow down key. As I highlight the different widths, notice how the drawing of the stitch changes. I'd like to keep it at 8.5. To lock the width, just press either the left or right mouse buttons or the enter key. The outline turned back to white. The box is now inactive. To put it in the sequence, move the mouse and highlight the command Add at End. Click the left mouse button or press Enter. Notice the stitch displayed in the work area now. Next I want to have stitch number 59, so click the right mouse button or press the Escape key. Here's a dialog box asking for the next stitch program number. Use the keyboard to type number 59. Click the left mouse button or press the Enter key to OK the selection. Here's stitch program number 59 displayed. Let's change the stitch length this time. Highlight the Change Length command in the submenu.
Click the left mouse button or press enter. The stitch length box is now outlined in color, meaning it's active. Reduce the length to 16. See the stitch length change? Okay, click either the left or right mouse button or press enter. Let's add it at the end of the sequence. Highlight Add at End. Then click the left mouse button or press Enter. There it is. But if you look at the two stitches, you'll see they don't make a smooth connection one to the other. I need to pattern mirror the stitch. But first, let's go back and delete it. First, let's highlight Correct. This will undo only the last stitch that you entered. Click the left mouse button or press enter. Move the mouse and highlight mirror on off at the bottom of the sub menu. Click the left mouse button or press enter to select it. The program automatically flipped the stitch and now displays its mirror image. Above the stitch display and to the right, you'll see a red mirror image icon. This will stay on the screen until you toggle the mirror on off again. Let's add it at the end. Highlight Add at End. Then click the left mouse button or press Enter. Now I can see the stitches will smoothly flow one into the other. Let's go look at a row before we sew it. Click the right mouse button to exit. The program number dialog box. Since we won't be adding more stitches now, we need to exit this dialog box also. Click the right mouse button. Here's the stitch selection dialog box. We need to exit this one too. Click the right mouse button. Good, we're back at the main menu. Open the Format menu at the extreme right of the main menu by highlighting it and clicking the left mouse button. The commands under the Format menu allow you to view the stitch sequence in different ways. Move the mouse and highlight Repeat. Click the left mouse button to OK the command. The computer has displayed our stitch sequence across the work area. Look at the submenu. The normal command is highlighted now. Notice the asterisk to the left of both the normal and repeat commands. It's telling us that the work area is the normal size and the stitch sequence shown inside is repeated across the work area. Let's see what this sequence would look like with a mirrored row above. Highlight mirror with the arrow pointing up command. Click the left mouse button. There's the second row just above our original row. But I'm going to use this sequence as an edging. So let's send this to the sewing machine. Click the right mouse button or press escape to exit the mirror up command. Click the right mouse button again to exit the format sub menu. Now open the file menu. Select to machine by highlighting it and clicking the left mouse button or pressing enter. Here's the in memory directory. Below it is a box that keeps track of the total amount of memory you have free or available. Unlike the p memory directory, this directory does not highlight the first empty memory. It always highlights the first memory. So move the mouse until you are highlighting a free memory. Mine is M1. Click the left mouse button. The sequence is now stored in the sewing machine. We need to press any key to clear the screen of the dialog box. Let's go to the sewing machine and sew this sequence out. Before you start sewing, make sure you've selected the proper M memory on the sewing machine. Doesn't that look great? I like this edge finish, Philip. Where are you planning on using this? 
Oh, Crystal, you could use that in a lot of places. For example, on placemats, napkins, or a tablecloth, or even as an edge finish for a simple shell or blouse. One thing I always do is treat the underside with a fabric sealant like fray check before trimming it. That's a good idea. Next, I'd like to show you how to enter alphabets using the PC Designer software. If you thought it was easy entering letters with a creative designer that came with your sewing machine, just wait until you see how much better it is with a computer. You'll be amazed at how easy it is. Crystal, why don't you go to the computer and show us now? Sure. We want to clear the work area of the previous sequence and start a new one. So first, let's open the File menu and highlight New Sequence. Now we'll click the left mouse button, or we could use Enter. Here's a dialog box warning us that if we continue, the sequence in the work area will be erased. Well, that's okay since Philip still has it in the sewing machine. So we'll highlight Yes and click the left mouse button, or we could use Y on the keyboard. Good, a new work area. To select the alphabets, we'll highlight and open the Design menu. Here's the submenu. We'll highlight the alphabets and click the left mouse button, or we could use Enter. Now we have a dialog box asking us to select an alphabet style. It displays a letter A in each of the styles that are on the sewing machine. I'd like to use the outline style, so I'll move the mouse and highlight the outline letter A. Now I'll click the left mouse button, or I could use the Enter key. In the center of the screen, we have an alphabet text box, and below it is the width box. Notice that they are already outlined in red, meaning that the box is active. The submenu box to the right has type text highlighted. When you first open the alphabets, the screen is set up and ready for you to begin typing your text. If you want to make any changes in the width, you must do that before you begin typing, though. And here's an instance where you must use the keyboard. This time, it's the left and right arrow keys. So let's go back to the computer and make some changes. I'll press the left arrow key twice to reduce the width to 8 millimeters. I won't click the mouse button yet. I want to type Philip's name. I'll use the keyboard and type P-H-I-L-L-I-P. -I there. Now I can click the left mouse button, or I could use Enter. The type text and width boxes are no longer highlighted. I'll move the mouse and highlight the command Add at End. Now I'll click the left mouse button, or use Enter. Well, I've typed too many L's in Philip's name again, but that's okay. I can fix it easily enough. Let me show you how. With the mouse, I'll highlight the command Turn Cursor On. Now, I'll click the left mouse button to select it. The outline of the work area is now highlighted, meaning that it is active. Can you see the blue line in the work area? That's my cursor, and I can move it from letter to letter. I'll move it to the spot between the two L's. To lock it into place, I can use either the left or right mouse key. Let's exit. We'll click the right mouse key. Now we'll exit the stitch selection box, too. We'll click the right mouse key again. I'll go to the Delete menu and open it. I'll highlight the command at cursor position, and I'll click the left mouse button to select it. Here's a dialog box asking if we want to delete the stitch pattern at the cursor position. Yes, we do, so we'll highlight Yes and click the left mouse button, or I could use Y on the keyboard. The extra L is gone. We can send this to the machine now, so we'll exit by clicking the right mouse button. Now we'll open the File menu and select To Machine by highlighting and clicking the left mouse button. Here's the M memory directory. I'll highlight memory number two because it's empty or free. I'll click the left mouse button, and the sequence is stored in my directory. I'll press any key, and we'll go sew this out. 
I've already selected the M memory that I put Philip's name into, and I've used the single pattern key. There. With the PC Designer software, it's so much quicker to enter M memories, and it's easier to correct mistakes. Now you don't have to erase everything back to the point you want and then re-enter. You simply move the cursor to where you want, and presto, it's gone. Remember that when you move the cursor, the stitch will be at the beginning. The stitch just to the right or behind the cursor is the one that will be deleted. Now I'd like to go on and show you the script alphabet. Okay, Philip, since I've just shown how to delete a stitch, why don't you show us how to enter a stitch in the middle? You bet, Crystal. It's real easy to do. Let's open the file menu and select New Sequence. Highlight and click the left mouse button. Here's the warning box. Yes, I do want to design a new sequence. Highlight Yes and click the mouse or type Y. Open the design menu and select Alphabet. Highlight and click the left mouse button. Highlight the first script letter A. Click the left mouse button to OK it. I'm not going to change the width, but I will use upper and lowercase letters when I type. This time I'm going to type your name, Crystal. Capital C, R, Y, S, T, L. Click the left mouse button to exit the typing mode. Move the mouse and highlight Add at End. Click the left mouse button to execute the command. Crystal's name is misspelled because I purposely left the A out so I could go back and show you how easy it is to drop the A into its proper place. Highlight the Turn Cursor On command and click the left mouse button. The work area is highlighted and active. I can move the cursor from letter to letter. I'm going to place it in front of the L. Click either the right or left mouse button to lock the cursor in place. Next, highlight typed text and click the left mouse key. The text box is highlighted and active. Just type the letter A, nothing else. Exit the type text command by clicking the right mouse button. This time, instead of using the add at end command, Let's highlight Add It Cursor. Click the left mouse button. See how the program just dropped the A between the T and the L? Let's send this to the sewing machine. Exit this typing mode by clicking the right mouse button. Exit the stitch selection box by clicking the right mouse button again. Okie dokie. Open the file menu. Highlight to machine and click the left mouse button. The M memory directory. Let's put it in M3. Highlight it and click the left mouse button to OK the selection. Press any key. Let's go on to the machine and sew this out. I've already selected the M memory I sent it to and engaged the single pattern key. Looks great, doesn't it? When I typed in Crystal's name, I used the shift key on the keyboard to type in a capital letter C. The rest of her name was typed in in lower case. This is a feature of the script alphabet. You don't have to go back and forth between upper and lower case styles. The program does it for you automatically. 
If Philip had not used the shift key, my name would have been all in lowercase. And on the other hand, if the caps lock had been engaged, it would have been an uppercase. The shift key has no effect on the block or outline style. Crystal, how about doing a new design sequence for us, but this time let's use the P memory. Good idea. Earlier, Philip showed us how to rotate a design 180 degrees with the alligator. I'd like to show you how to design with stitches that have been rotated front to back. I've already rotated program number 94 and sent it to the machine using the p-memory. Now let's go back to the computer. We'll open the file menu and select the new sequence command. We've highlighted it, now we'll click the left mouse button. Yes, we want to design a new sequence, so we'll highlight yes and click the left mouse button, or we could type y. Now we'll open the design menu and we'll highlight program 00 through 177 and we'll click the mouse to OK it. Now we'll type program number 94 on the keyboard and press the enter key. Here's the display of stitch number 94. Let's put one in the work area. We'll make sure that the add at end command is highlighted. Then we'll click OK with the left mouse button. There it is. Now let's exit back to the stitch selection menu. We'll click the right mouse button, click it one more time, and here we are at the stitch selection menu. We'll highlight P memory and OK with the left mouse button. The computer is now displaying the P memory directory. Let's look at it for just a minute. Some of the memories have two crosses next to them. That means they contain 9 millimeter designs. Several of the others have the letters MDF, and this means they have designs that have multi-directional feed stitches inside. You cannot select an MDF design, so with that in mind, let's go back to the computer. I want P memory number 6, so I'll highlight it and click the left mouse button. The P memory stitches are displayed in exactly the same manner as a built-in stitch. You can change the width, the length, or mirror them. Look at the stitch in the display. You can see that it has been rotated 180 degrees. That kind of rotating can only be done in the P section of the program. I want to have the leaves touching, so I'm going to select the command add at cursor. I'll highlight it and click the left mouse button. Isn't that pretty? Let's see what a row of this combination will look like. We'll exit by clicking the right mouse button. We'll click again to exit the directory and once more to exit the stitch selection menu. We'll go to the format menu, highlight it and open it. Next we'll highlight repeat and press the left mouse button. Wonder what it looks like mirrored. Let's highlight mirror up and click the left mouse button. I like the way that looks, but I've got another idea I'd like to see, so let's exit the viewing mode. I'll click the right mouse button. Now I want to see only one repeat, so let's highlight the repeat command and click the left mouse button. Good. Back to a single repeat of my sequence. Let's exit by clicking the right mouse button. Now we'll go back and open the design menu again and highlight program 00 through 177. And we'll press the left mouse button to OK. Let's type in stitch number 131 and press the Enter key. Do you see that the cursor is between the two stitches? Well, that's exactly where I want to put this stitch. And if it weren't there, I could always move it. We'll highlight Add at Cursor and click the left mouse button to OK the command. I like this, and I don't need to see a whole row since I'll only be sewing a single pattern. So we'll send this to the machine and to the disk. I'll exit by clicking the right mouse button once, a second time, and a third time. Now I'll open the file menu and I'll highlight to machine. 
and I'll click the mouse button to OK this selection. M memory number four is available. That's where I'll put this. I'll click the left mouse button to OK my selection. Now I can press any key. I would like to save this to the disk as well, so I'll open the file menu again and highlight to disk. I click to OK my decision. Here's a dialog box asking us to name the design sequence. Remember to use only up to eight characters and no punctuation marks. I'll call it Crystal. Using the keyboard, I'll type the letters C R Y S T A L. Now I'll press Enter. The sequence is stored in the disk file, and I can press any key. Now, we've stored this in the machine and on the disk. But before we sew, I'd like to show you how to check the disk. I'll open the file menu and highlight from disk. I'll click the left mouse button to OK my selection. It's OK to erase the sequence in the work area since it's in file and the sewing machine. So I'll highlight yes and click the left mouse button, or I could type Y. And there it is, next to the number one. Let's select it just to see. We'll click the left mouse button. And there it is. I'd like to sew it now, but first, let's exit the program completely. We'll open the file menu again, and we'll highlight exit. I'll click the left mouse button. Here's the last dialog box. Yes, we do want to leave this program, so I'll highlight yes, and click the left mouse button, or I could simply type Y. The opening screen with the sewing machine is back, and here's where we would type E for exit. Let's go sew. I've selected the M memory that I sent the sequence to, and I've engaged single pattern. I really like this. That's a great design on collars and cuffs, and it's also good under monograms as well. Remember, you can rotate any stitch 180 degrees in the P section, send it to the sewing machine, and work with it in the M section. This adds a great deal of versatility to your built-in stitches. I especially like the ability to preview a new sequence in the format menu. This has saved me a lot of time in sewing out test samples. And I just like to sit at the computer and play with new designs and new sequences. Oh, so do I, Philip. That's the best way to learn the software is sit down and play with it. Well, I think we've given you a good start to understanding how both sections of the software work. And now it's time to move on. We want to show you some other techniques on your 1475 CD. Crystal, why don't you tell us about this quilt sampler you have? Well, this sampler has several ways to quilt on machine, and we'll talk about four of them today. This design here in the center was done free motion using the darning foot. Traditional quilting calls for the use of medium weight calicos and broadcloths, but today anything seems to go. Even the thread we're using is very non-traditional. That's true. I've used both metallics and monofilament. But you must be careful with monofilament thread. If you're winding a bobbin, wind slowly and only half full, because monofilament will heat up and stretch, and it could cause your bobbin to crack or get stuck on the winding spindle, or worse yet, in the bobbin case. Today we're using a standard needle-punched quilt batting, but you should try the fleece. It has less loft than the standard batting and can be very effective in wearable art. Now, I like to do free motion quilting, so let's go to the machine and let me show you how to put the darning foot on. The silver pin at the back of the darning foot fits into the hole just below the silver thumb screw. The clear finger must go behind the needle bar clamp. Slide it in place and tighten the screw down. Before we quilt, we need to draw a design onto the fabric. 
I used a silver marking pencil to transfer my design to the fabric. Be sure whatever marker you use that it will either brush out or wash out. And on a larger piece of fabric, I would use safety pins to hold the three layers together. That's right, but be careful when you're pinning the three layers that each one is smooth, because if you pin wrinkles, you'll sew wrinkles. That's right. When you're doing free motion quilting, you're moving the fabric, not the feed dogs. So let's go to the machine and lower the feed dogs and set the machine for program 00, a straight stitch. Remember to put the presser foot into the darning position. I'm going to follow the design lines I've drawn. Don't forget to sew a few stitches in place to tie off. When doing free motion quilting, consistent speed is very important. Don't speed up and slow down as this will make the length very uneven. That's right, and the right thread can help hide any inconsistencies. A matching thread or a monofilament won't show the differences as much as a contrasting thread. Now we've chosen a contrasting thread on our sampler today just so it's easier for you to see. Practice this technique until you feel comfortable, but don't make your great-grandmother's quilt top your first project. Since I'm already set up for free motion work, I'm going to show you stippling, which is much easier than the free motion quilting because you don't have to follow a design. What you'll be doing is meandering across the fabric in a random fashion. Don't forget the darning position. I'm going to start on the left side and sew gentle curves up and down as I move towards the right side. Now I would do the same thing and move back towards the left side. It's just that easy. Stipple quilting doesn't have to be as exact as free motion quilting. Since there isn't a specific design, your eye is not as drawn to the individual stitches. So in one direction, only as far as it's comfortable to move the fabric. Then sew back to the starting place. The randomness of the stitching will blend the rows together. That's right. The only thing not to do is stitch over any of your previous stitching lines. To get an idea of how to sew it, look at number 163 on the machine. Philip, will you sew some of that for us? Sure will, Crystal. I've changed the presser foot and raised the feed dogs. It looks just like the stipple stitch. You can use the stitch right from the machine if you were making a miniature quilt. Crystal, I've shown you free motion quilting and stippling. Which one are you going to show us next? Echo quilting. Now, it's called echo quilting because each row parallels the previous row. The rows are about 3 eighths to a half inch apart. They can be done free motion, but I like to do mine with the feed dogs up and the dual feed engage. Also, I use stitch number 01. That's the straight stitch that has 19 needle positions. Now, your position may vary depending on how you look at your fabric and the foot. I've drawn a design on my fabric and I've sewn some rows. Let's go back and I'll show you how to continue sewing the rows. I've engaged the needle down key because it will help me to pivot around curves. When you reach a pivot spot, stop the machine lift the presser foot and turn the fabric. Then continue along. Just keep following the rows in the same manner. 
As you sew farther away from the first rows, the pivot points become less sharp and more graceful. Echo quilting will emphasize the design or applique work by echoing the shape out to the borders of the quilt. The next technique we're going to look at is channel quilting. That's this type here. These are just evenly spaced rows. They can be sewn on the straight of grain or on the bias. Now here's a case where again I'll use my presser foot as a guide and I've chosen stitch number 00 which is the straight stitch in the center needle position. Now here's another case where dual feed works wonderfully so don't forget to engage that. Let's go to the machine and do some channel quilting. Here's a place that I like to use the automatic tie-off so I engage that button. And I engage the tie-off button again just before I came to the end of the row. If you wanted, you could sew rows at a 90 degree angle to form a diamond pattern like this. When you're channel quilting, it's amazing how dual feed will help move all three layers of the quilt through evenly. It does a wonderful job quilting. I think making a small sampler like this is a great idea. It lets you use the different techniques on a small scale. That way you don't find yourself working on a large project using a technique that's not particularly your favorite. That's true. And here we have a totally different kind of quilting called sashiko. It originally comes from Japan. The worker's clothing was made from indigo cotton, and when it became worn, it was repaired by sewing one piece of cloth to another using a long white running stitch. And this vest was totally sashiko quilted on the 1475 CD. This really does look hand done, Crystal. You must have done something very special to get that effect. Well, I did, Philip. It was a combination of stitch, thread, tension, and plate. The thread I used was YLI's monofilament thread in my needle, and I wound a lightweight cotton embroidery thread for my bobbin. The stitch I used is number eight, and I like to call that the saddle stitch. And I used the straight stitch foot along with a straight stitch plate. This is the plate that has the single round needle hole. So far, nothing so unusual here, Crystal. What's the real trick? Well, the trick part comes next, Philip. I'll increase the needle thread tension to number nine. When stitch number eight makes the forward motion, it lays the monofilament thread on the fabric. But when it makes the reverse action, it pulls up the bobbin thread, and that's the only thread you'll see. Well, I thought the needle thread tension had something to do with this. Why don't we go back to the machine and you show us how? Sure. I've already put on the straight stitch plate and I'm using the straight stitch foot. Also, I have the dual feed engaged. It really does fool the eye. Traditional sashiko patterns flow smoothly one into the other like here on the vest. There are no harsh transitions between patterns. Philip, looks like you have something totally different to show us. Yes, I've been working with a new fabric called Ultra Leather. It's made by the same people who make Ultra Suede. It's a synthetic with a leather look. Looks like you've done a lot of decorative work on this jacket. How did you do this couching? I used the single needle cording foot, which is my favorite accessory foot, to couch this heavy metallic cord. This is the single needle cording foot. It has one long toe on the left-hand side and three grooves. Two grooves on the top, and the center groove runs the length of the bottom of the foot. The grooves hold the cord in place while I'm couching them. I'd like to see how you place those cords, Philip. Will you sew some for us? I'd be happy to, Crystal. Select program 33 and reduce the width to 5.5 millimeters. Engage the needle down button. Sew a few stitches, then stop with the needle in the left position. Raise the foot and insert the first cord into the left slot. Sew until the needle is in the center position. Raise the foot and insert the center cord. Sew until the needle is in the right position. Now raise the foot and insert the last cord.
That's how easily it's done. Philip, what foot did you use to couch down this ribbon? Certainly not the single needle cording foot. No, Crystal. I used the Teflon embroidery foot 2A. It's just like your standard foot 2, except it has a Teflon coating on the bottom. The coating helps the foot glide over the fabric easier. Is this the ribbon you used? Yes, that's a multicolored metallic ribbon thread. Let's go to the machine and I'll show you how easy it is to couch. Select program number 166 and engage the needle down button. Take one stitch and raise the presser foot. Place the ribbon under the foot and sew. If your ribbon is wider than 1 8 inch, increase the stitch width. Don't be afraid to use the embroidery patterns on the synthetic leathers and suede. I also enjoyed experimenting with other fabrics. For example, here I sewed the scallop stitch over silk noil. And I also used some of the cross stitch programs. Here I used number 86 and over here number 120. And I found that when I top stitch on ultra leather, I like the Teflon foot. I like this foot because it has a cutout for dual feed. So you have a choice, either the Teflon embroidery foot or the Teflon standard foot. It all depends on what kind of sewing you'll be doing. Let's take a look at this beautiful jacket, Crystal. The black design is ultra suede, isn't it? It sure is. It's a fleur-de-lis. Ultra suede makes appliquing so easy. When I drafted the pattern for my ultra suede, I made sure it extended into the seam allowance and the hems of my sleeves. And I used a lightweight clear monofilament thread in my needle. I chose program number 10, and I set my width and my length both at 1.5. My tension was at four, and I used foot number 0A with my dual feed. Let's go to the machine, and I'll show you how I did it. I've engaged the needle down button, and I've made sure that the right swing of the needle goes off the applique and onto the base fabric. There, you can barely see the stitching. Appliquing with ultra suede is the quickest and easiest way I know. Since it doesn't ravel, traditional edge finishes such as a satin stitch or turning under the edges of the fabric aren't necessary. The combination of the narrow zigzag and the clear monofilament thread make the stitches almost invisible. Well, Crystal, that's all we have time for today. We hope you'll make a quilting sampler and experiment with the synthetic leather and suede. Start small with an applique or a trim. And explore the possibilities of the PC Designer software. We've given you the basics, so jump right in there and start designing your own stitches and sequences. It's really very easy. And it's so much fun. So enjoy your creative 1475 CD. And from me, Philip Pepper, bye-bye. And me, Crystal Toma. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.